Your hearts. Hi, I'm Kat, Katarina Giglio, and um, I just want to say hi to all my um, wonderful friends who I know are watching and to um, all of my new subscribers and new subbies. I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for your thumbs up, all of your likes, your comments. I love hearing from you. And also, thank you so much for sharing. We really appreciate your shares. It helps our channel out so much. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you. And this week, I have a video for you and guess what next week I'm gonna have another video for you uh, because we had to break it up into two parts um, I made a book and I know you're gonna say oh cat you made a book last time I know I know but we're traveling again and so I had to make another travel journal so I made a miniature lap book out of these antique books and I think you're gonna like it so to make my antique uh, little lap book uh, I used this the set of, as you can see, they were crumbling and falling apart. In fact, I got three books, I think, uh, and two covers for 50 cents at an estate sale and just loved these books so much. Um, and it's, they measure four by five and a half inches. <clears throat> and uh, I fell in love with the paper, the marbled paper, and um, I just thought they would, uh, I would use them for something. I didn't know what. And as I said, we're going uh, to take another trip. And um, so we're, we're headed to London again, and we're also going to Denmark. And I thought I wanted to do something completely different. And I've seen other lap books. And if you, if you don't know what a lap book is, it's usually it's a book that uh, usually students use, kind of a supplemental kind of book. It's interactive and it's kind of fun for them. And um, so I have seen uh, several um, mixed media lap books and thought, well, I wanted to make something that was small and kind of tiny. And uh, so. Anyway, so here we are. Um, I am sanding off the edges. I gutted the book and I had those two extra covers. So you've got to have four book covers in order to create your lap book. Um, and I wanted to just get all the crumbly bits off and get it all ready um, to, uh, to line up and then de decide you know, which covers I wanted to fit together. I had a couple of choices at this point because they had those wonderful little uh, corners and I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the corners or if I wanted to cover them up. In the end, of course, I had to cover everything, but I had to think about what I really wanted to do at that point. So I decided to put clear gesso on the front cover and the back cover because these are really old books and I wanted them to wear well. I know this book is going to be completely thrashed and so I wanted it to be a little bit heavy duty. Um, I still want that old wonderful look of the antique book but I want it to be able to wear well and I want it to be more archival because of course it's acidic. So I covered both the front and the back with clear, ge uh, clear gesso and now I'm making the um, signatures and I ended up with five signatures with two pages each and I used um, mixed media paper the tanned uh, the tan it's a toned tan actually by Strathmore and of course everything that you're seeing me use um, you can get um, in my uh, in the comments section just below the video um, you know the link will just take you right there and you can purchase it and um, I, I really love this uh, tone tan paper I just think it's really yummy uh, and so I just hand cut the pages and um, 
I cut them just a, just slightly larger because I knew I wanted to use the deckel scissors and um, so I wanted to make sure that I had pl you know plenty of of uh, paper to cut with the deckel. So uh, here I'm measuring um, and then cutting that off again so that I have a really nice edge. I wanted them all to have a, a cool deckle cut. It takes you a little bit longer, but I think it looks so beautiful. And um, it's just pretty fun. And then using my wonderful antique bone folder that has, has been through many classes and um, to get it all folded and nice and crisp. Um, and then edging it course, making it just slightly smaller so that when I fit them all together they all matched up pretty carefully. Usually I'm not that careful with pages but I didn't want the pages to stick out because I knew that the book was going to be fat and going to be folded over so I wanted them to fit inside really nicely. And now I'm measuring up to the old spine to make sure it's not going to be too much and that it would fit. And that made me happy. <laughs> okay. Now I used, um, all of this is bricolage. You know how I am? I love to use up my old stuff. So I had some old upholst upholstery fabric. And um, so I ironed it and I used a, a, a fabric, a magic size uh, sizing spray sizing to give it a little bit more sturdiness and then I ironed the edges so that they were folded over and now I'm measuring up everything putting the fabric on the back so I had to cut three pieces uh, because we needed to cover the other uh, book book covers as well and I wanted to reinforce the spine so I used that that toned tan paper and cut it to the very same size as the original spine. And uh, that's going to reinforce because I didn't think that the, uh, I knew that the, uh, the linen wasn't going to be strong enough to carry the weight of the book. So, so we're going to just glue it all together with PVA and uh, that's going to also help uh, keep the book um, nice and archival. Um, I decided to cover the outside. <clears throat> on both both the covers. And then lay down lay the covers down onto the fabric. Now I'm using the spacer in between to make sure that it's the perfect space. I'm not trying to guess it. <laughs> so laying the fabric down onto the covers. And sorry about my hair getting in the way there. <laughs> trying to make sure everything's lining up. And just remember, you know, you're making a book and it's for you. Um, you don't have to worry about it being absolutely perfect. In fact, perfectionism is something that absolutely kills artists. So don't, don't try to be perfect. <laughs> um, don't worry about it if the edges don't match up or um, if one side is a little wonky or a little longer or your stitches aren't perfect. Don't worry about that. Just keep making books. Okay, so now I'm going to just glue the ends in and glue the spine. Now you want to make sure you have a dry brush because if you don't have a dry brush and you have any water on it you're going to ruin your fabric because it will just seep right into the fabric. So you want to make sure that you, you keep your brush really dry. Um, and then just folding the edges up and gluing them down.
And I reinforced all of the edges with a little extra glue to make sure that they would stay down and stay nice and tight. And at this point, you have the rough book, like you would make any antique book or any kind of altered book. Um, it's it, you know you have this sense of accomplishment of, of finishing that part. And now we have two more pieces to fit on either side. So I have my fabric all ready and I have my spacers and I cut my spacers just deciding that it would be half the size of the spine. That's how I just determined it. Now you can determine it any way you want when you're making your book. It's going to depend on how big your envelopes are going to be, how gusseted that they're going to be, and in fact you might even want to make your envelopes. Um, you know, if you're going to, you might, might want to make them first so you can actually see. I know I'm not going to make super big envelopes, but I am going to want to have space there. So I wanted to put the spacer in so that it would have a nice little spine and that it would fold really beautifully. It's going to make a nice, fat, chunky book, and I'm so excited about it. So I just simply glued it down, put the fabric on top, and then used my bone folder to um, smooth it down and make sure it had a really good connection. And there again, sorry again about the hair. <laughs> Crazy Italian hair got in the way once again. <laughs> okay, now the next side. And then once we get this fit and glued down, then we can glue all the ends. And then you can really start to see it, the lap book take shape. I just love the color of the uh, upholstery mm -hmm. fabric. And um, I thought it went so well with the antique paper. It's just so pretty. Just yummy the way it all looks together. Yay. Worked perfectly. Now I decided to use Tyvek to stitch my signatures into. Instead of a fabric, um, I know that, like I said, I know it's going to be thrashed around, so I wanted just a smattering of extra strength, and I knew Tyvek would do it. So uh, it's, I have to warn you, if you use Tyvek, it will, be, it will roll around, and you might not get straight stitches. So if you're a perfectionist, this, isn't, this probably isn't the product to use. It's much easier to use cloth or something else. Um, you could also use book binding tape, and I thought about that, um, stitching it through that and then pulling the thread off or the uh, backing off of it. But uh, I decided to go with the Tyvek because I knew it would be really sturdy and hold up really well. So I'm just um, flattening my uh, waxed linen thread, and I, I used a, an old bone, bone folder to do that. And uh, I have my pages already marked with a pencil to show me where I'm going to stitch. And I used a really simple stitch. One hole on one side, one hole on the other side, and I'm just going to tie it off on the inside for each signature. Just super simple, super easy. Not a whole lot of stitching. And I also used my Tyvek. I, I, I made sure that I had lines. I used my fingernail to crease lines uh, to make sure that I knew exactly where the signatures were going to line up on the Tyvek so that I had a scotia of room on either side to glue it down into the book. So now I'm just going to pierce through the Tyvek. 
and it's much easier if you hold the Tyvek and your signature up against your rag or antique book, whatever it is you're using to, uh, to punch through. And then going through and then back through my signature. And I used um, a length of wax linen that's probably about one and a half times because it was such a short signature. And because it's this heavy duty wax linen, I know it's gonna, it's gonna stay in the book. It's not gonna be a problem. So you don't have to stitch it a whole bunch of times. If you want to, you can, um, you know, just go for it. But I just wanted to make it as simple as possible. Because making a lap book is a lot of work, as you're going to see. And then, of course, we have all the decorating and the end papers to do. And, you know, that's going to take a lot of time, too. I mean, just perusing all the ideas and, and possibilities takes you time. I, I, I don't know why I have to pull every single thing out of my closet and decide how I'm going to decorate it. But I definitely have to do, and I'm sure you can relate to that. So... Okay, so I have everything stitched into my book. You don't have to worry about all of the writing on the back of your Tyvek. It's not going to show up. And now we're going to glue it into the spine in the center of the lap book. Using PVA, and I'm using it pretty liberally here. And it glued in really well, really easily into the book. And it turned out so well. There we go, all the pages glued in. I was really happy with the PVA working with the tie back. Finished. Yay. Okay, so my book is completely dry and all the pages are in and uh, I love how it folds out. Just wanted to share it with you again. And um, now I'm going to decide how I'm going to finish this off because I need to put in my end pages. Uh, I need to put in envelopes and pockets and all kinds of fun things in here. And, um, and I have so many possibilities. Look at all the possibilities. And I just love the paper. It's so yummy. And I found this yummy paper, which goes really well with that, don't you think? Um, and, uh, you know, Florida Lees and Keys and all kinds of wonderful, cool things. There's so many possibilities. It's just endless. So we've got to work on that next week. Well, we're almost at Chow for now. Actually, pretty close to Chow for now. And I had a really good time making this little mini lap book. And um, I can't wait to finish it this week and then share it with you on Friday. So until then, ciao for now.